Okay, we're uh, ready for a round table discussion. Um, which way? Go this yeah. way. What would you like to fill us in on? Um, I really just have a little bit of information confirming that the second round of the roof program application process finished, I think, May 26th. There was a drawing on May 27th. It was a citywide drawing. 68 um, property owners' names were selected, and there were 20 alternates also selected, and the staff is going through the process of cross-checking the information on those applications and then coordinating with the intake provider, which is um, ABC, to get that um, listing. And then ABC will be reaching out to the individual property owners so that they can um, do the full application. If any of those property owners fall out of the process because they're ineligible for one way or another, the alternates will be selected and they don't really anticipate based on previous experience that um, they will need more than the 20 alternates to still be able to do the 68 grants for new roofs for folks. Thank you, Linda. Any questions on that? No? Okay, what's up in Corn Hill? Well, uh, We've, we've gone through our uh, strategic plan and to see where we're at on a lot of different things and we're, we're ahead on some and behind on some. We are down to 28 homes uh, that are renting in Cornhill that don't have a CFO and uh, a couple of them are preservation issues so they don't have a CFO because of that. Nobody has been, um, nobody's not renting but we, we want to get it so that everybody who is renting to people uh, that they do have a CFO. So that we're, that's down from 58 to, to 28. So we're very proud to be working on, working on that. We still have uh, our three vacant houses and these are all part of that wonderful thing where people's property gets sent off to limbo when they don't pay taxes and don't pay the mortgage and then it sort of sits there until somebody in the courts or someplace in California or something else can decide what they're going to do with them, which really makes it a little bit of a problem. But we're still mowing the lawns and and uh, keeping uh, things here. Uh, there's Darian. Uh, uh, so anyway, in, in the middle of all this. But we've also looked at the projects that we have had in the works uh, with our neighborhood service center. We have tried desperately to go through the process. We read the, the material and drank the Kool-Aid, but at this point in time, we're, we're, still, uh, we're still waiting to hear from six projects and so we're doing the direct route to go directly to the people of the city that we need to talk with one is uh, that until somebody it's sort of like uh, you know people with uh, Uzis that are somebody's gonna die and this is uh, what we feel about the traffic light the lack of a traffic light at the corner of South Plymouth and uh, exchange where people walk across to all of the bars all the restaurants all of everything and, and it's relying on the people to see the little sign that says New York State law says that you should stop. So that's been two years in the process. Also, we are the other half of South Plymouth and the South Plymouth down on their end of South Plymouth got uh, lights when they redid the roads and the bump outs and so forth and so on. But the guy said, well, we did all of South Plymouth. No, you missed a block and a half. So we're still trying to go back two years and get our block and a half's worth of lights. That's why I asked about lights here. Stop that, signs, that's uh, no, north of the circle, is it? Pardon? Is that north of the circle? No, it's right on the exchange. Uh -huh, uh, right okay. at right, right, right across from the statue, right where people come down Plymouth, uh -huh. and they park all over, and then they, <coughs> I mean, those restaurants are buzzing, and uh, people get buzzing when they leave the restaurants, and when they're buzzed leaving there, if they walk across that street, uh, you know, with no but somebody else who's also maybe buzzed from another place. It's just a matter of time before somebody gets hit because there's no there's no reason for anybody to stop. So it's just a real safety kind of thing. We only want a pedestrian-driven one so that you can at least push a button and the pedestrian would cross. We don't want to have it go on and off, on and off all the time, but uh, that's the way it is. And if you go down there and you look and see how fast people are going because there is a thing there that tells you that you're going 52 miles an hour in a 30-mile zone. So that's just sort of sort of one of those things. We've been listed for a couple of years to have our streets um, redone, and also the bricks in there, and that's been two and a half years, and it's on somebody's desk. 
So we're um, moving all of our projects into our own whatever, and we're, we're uh, getting a tent. We're going to become the tent people of uh, the city hall, and we're going down and do, do some di di uh, direct negotiating on some of the issues that, that have come for us. Right now, of course, we're getting ready for a festival, and uh, we have lots of people. Uh, please come. And um, we have some kids that come, uh, emerging artists, young kids that just out of school, and, and we give them a free booth. And, so there's lots of you know good stuff, good food, free music, ten thousand dollars worth of free music. So come and enjoy that. So that's about it. Great. Thank you. For the and those dates are nine and ten of July. Those are nine and ten of July. Yes. All right. Yes. Free bus service from wherever, and if you can park uh, pretty much on this side of the road and walk over, you can walk. You can do it. Are you familiar with downtown Canada? Yeah. Yes, we, we're very familiar with that. We've said that model, that's the model that we have in our charade. The pedestrian right, and right. The LEDs in the street. And right, like yeah. yeah. I, I hear, though, that they uh, they had some problems with them, and they, they, uh, they, they started to take them out. But I have found others in the United States of America that they did a little different lighting system. I really, I mean, that would be really nice. All I want is something that goes red mm -hmm. so that people can go across. Yeah. I mean, it's it's really... I mean, I'm used to the place, but, you know, there's a lot of people that we want to, we're trying to get people to come downtown. The restaurants are busy. It's, you know, we go down there and they're all having a good time. And there's lots of restaurants now for people to go to, but it's just, you're going to park on one side of the street or the other. And it's, it's just, a, it's an accident waiting to happen. So, yeah, but I, that was in our charade, that very model. Okay, Rabbit right. Cemetery Project is continuing with its work on grants. Uh, we've submitted two, one on history and one dealing with the environmental issues. We look at this year as being more of a research-based year and a team-building year, and uh, more activity be happening next year. Our hope to have youth involved this summer is just not going to happen. The, the types of grants we were looking for just simply don't provide funds for, for engaging youth, so we'll have to modify things in respect. Uh, uh, we're going to be meeting together as the Rapids Cemetery Restoration Committee with the next video <coughs> and awaiting work from City of Story on that. So that's it. Okay. That's it. Hi, everybody. Mary Delisandro, uh, South Plymouth Avenue Business Association. July 1st, we're going to have a celebration for the best of Clifton. Just going to have, you know, a cookout, invite the neighbors. To, to wish her well. Uh, this was a wonderful award for her. She is just so thrilled. Which so, one was this now? This was... Tell them about the award. Tell them about the award. Um, she was the winner of the first annual Community Champion Award uh, for the Southwest Quadrant, um, sponsored by Neighbor Works Rochester. Mm -hmm. And every quadrant had one uh, one awardee, one champion, and there was uh, a selection committee and there was vigorous competition. And I don't know if you all saw it or not, but Bessie also was uh, interviewed on Channel 8 uh, last week. I don't uh -huh. know, but it was pretty awesome. Uh, so we're going to do a celebration for her. She's just eating it all up and it's wonderful to see her so happy. But I wanted to say that I started coming to the Southwest Common Council because of all the groups that I attended. This was the most organized and the most informative. In a meeting a couple months ago, someone explained that the Southwest Common Council is the hand of the Southwest, and the neighborhoods are the fingers. And when one of those fingers are not team players, then there is a very good chance the whole Southwest is affected. And I feel here we continue to push everything under the rug and then it continues to fester and it's hard to move forward because we're still thinking about what we pushed under the rug. And I've made mistakes for not knowing what I didn't know. I've weathered the storm and developed many, many friendships and I love it here. These last couple of weeks have revealed some not so nice sides of people in my community. Bessie Clifton receives an award, and do I hear excitement for her? No. I heard, I didn't know about the award, 
What were the nominating procedures? What does it matter what the procedures were? She got the award. Bessie was, oh, Bessie was a member of Plex Neighborhood Association for 25 years. And not one member from that association came to support her. And I really think that there's a problem with that. I'm not a member of Plex, but I would have expected every household to have received an email from Plex, from Plex with the good news. Bessie and our community deserved better. Uh, what? Who did the selection? Um, NeighborWorks of Rochester. NeighborWorks. NeighborWorks. This was totally a NeighborWorks I don't project. believe that they. I don't believe that they let too many people know who was going to get the award beforehand. Well, well, the other no, question. That's not true. Well, and, and let me just correct that because okay. at the quad meetings, Lynette Robinson handed out information concerning the Celebrate NeighborWorks, and in that material <coughs> that was, was presented, and she talked about it. Perhaps you were not there. There was a well, I nomination the, I application. Got the, I got the application. Okay. To uh, excuse me, I got the application to have a um, booth or whatever you want to call it at the at the thing, but I didn't. There was nothing in that application. One of the questions that I had was, and I've been trying to get this information to the best of my knowledge. There was one neighborhood at that uh, one neighborhood at that uh, event. What, what neighborhood for what? what the, at, there, there were supposed to be all the neighborhoods were supposed to come and they were supposed to have a booth and they were supposed to pass out information about their neighborhoods and so forth and so on. And to the best of my understanding, there was one neighborhood. Were you there? We were there. The 19th Ward. 19th Ward was there? Ward, was there? Ward, then no. there was two? No, yeah. in South Wedge was, was there. Okay, that's yeah. three? Well, well, and, I didn't, and I cannot no, tell no. you. No, there were several there. Yes. Huh? There yeah. were several tables yes. there. Well, I know there were a lot of tables. There was uh, the the uh, uh, banks and the vendors were there. To yeah, pay but aside the, but I just was just going to say, you know how many neighborhoods there are in the in the a lot in the city? A lot. And to the best of my knowledge, let's so let's give it five. Okay. Okay. Let's give it five neighborhoods. So there were maybe five neighborhoods at this thing, and I we got the thing, and and Nick and I said. Uh, we really didn't feel that we had the energy to do this, but the board said that they wanted to do it, so they did. So they were they were there, but there were very few neighborhoods at this thing. There are there are I think uh, there's uh, 65 neighborhoods in the city of Rochester when you go to all of the all over up and down and in and out. So uh, it wasn't super. She handed stuff out, but it, it was kind of one of those things that it was it was not very clear to us, and I can tell you. One of the things that uh, my neighborhood felt bad about is, is that we didn't nominate anybody from our neighborhood, and we also, not that, not that anybody wanted to take this away from this little lady, that well, was not the question. Uh, okay. The question was is that we would, it, it, we didn't know to nominate anybody. I mean, that, and I got the, I took the material to the board, and there was nothing in the material that I was given at the meeting that said anything about nominating. And to a person that went from Cornhill, they all clapped and said, isn't that great that this little person, she seemed to be so excited, it was wonderful. But what I'm merely saying is, is that if in fact this was for all of the neighborhoods and all over the place, somewhere along the line, there was a, not, there was a little bit of a disconnect about who got nominated and who wasn't there? Because I don't know. I, I I don't know that I knew beforehand that she was going to get this. Well, nobody knew. I mean, so I so, so how would I know to be there? Oh, it was no, that no, no. was advertised. Oh, it was advertised that she. Yes, it was very. Yes, it was, and they came and they interviewed her and the whole nine yards. But I mean, uh, a phone call was made. But the thing of it is, is that whenever anybody takes takes the time <clears> and effort to nominate someone, that's the key word effort and well, time. Yeah. And, and if we would have nominated pay somebody. Attention when, and I'm not just saying yeah. anybody, no. but people were so fraught with, oh my goodness, how did this happen? Well, it, happened it wasn't very it wasn't very well organized. And I'm well, sorry that Lynette you know isn't here because I would say that she us. was here. Our neighbor works in Rochester. You know, I I have called them. I have okay, written good. to them to ask them about, could you please send me a copy of whatever you think that we got? And they, they have yet to do it. Uh, and I will see Eric uh, in, in, in a couple days, and, and I hope to get something more from him because I, 
I did write a note to the executive director about how many neighborhoods were there. Now you're saying that there were five, and there were five out of you know so many. I guess what I you know I'm not saying that. I mean, here here for this woman, I you know really good, but I, there may well be that. We sure didn't know, and I don't know about the rest of the people about knowing. I don't well, know that it was... the people that nominated a, uh, someone, they knew. Well, so, you nominated yeah. but, but there were four quadrants. There were four, four different... Well, I don't know how they knew. Uh -huh. I mean, Maybe they, they have a different person that tells them. Yeah, I don't I, know how they knew. Did. I just know um, we didn't know. Well, I can, can, I hang on a minute. Complex, but if you guys don't mind, I'll ask complex. Basically, um, we received the email about the, the uh, award. And we do think, you know, we all we all love Betsy, but uh, it came at the last minute. So the question was, we're following, you know, the the uh, the protocol, I would say. And uh, Nora, Nora uh, she runs the Southwest Quadrant, so there was some confusion about it being a Southwest Quadrant award, you know, not being nominated. So we just said, okay, we'll we'll find out how it how it you know ends. But as far as press goes, we did give Bessie a gift, Thank and it was there was no one really there to support because there was already other um, people in Plex that were going to other things that they were going to be involved in. On this Monday uh, night. Excuse me. On this Monday night. On the Monday night. Yep. And so I mean, ultimately, great. Um, and again, as far as neighborhoods go, you're right. Uh, we 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 just met with Plex. We just met with uh, 17 neighborhood associations, and we started a new neighborhood coalition. And this new neighborhood coalition consists of all of these neighborhoods from Emma to, like you said, there's a bunch of neighborhood associations. We had our first meeting. And uh, more neighborhood associations are welcome to come to this new coalition. But uh, again, they also didn't know, and they were from other quadrants, about that particular event. Um, so I guess I would say poor communication with this event. Again, like I said, we didn't know anything about it until Don't we better next year. Yeah. 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 This is our first year. But, uh, but the only issue, the only issue that I have personally is that, as a Plex member and a Plex person, um, I just hate to see someone always try to, and I will say you, try to always portray something in a negative manner. Because at our at our Plex meeting, she said, "Hey, you know, Dorothy, you weren't there," and she said, "Yeah, I wasn't there." But the members were like, you know, we're, we're tired of the whole trying to portray something in a negative manner. And Dorothy said, hey, I already told, you know, whoever this person was that I had another commitment. Also, but, it was $10 a person. And it was $10 a person. Well, so it was $10 if you wanted to donate $10. You did not have to. Oh, it's that admission. It, it, it said donate to the admission. Oh, uh, Were you there? Yeah, let, hang, hang on a second. It said admission. Hey, you had to fly in hang on a second. Yeah, I, I knew you know, I, 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 I was there because uh, Lynette asked, could I have put a table there for the schools and um, now I, I'm probably as much in involved with news flying around as most people are and I've got a lot of things that I have on my plate that you know I'm, I keep an eye out for and I really wasn't aware of what was going on there uh, Lynette asked me to go there so I went down and uh, it was fun and you know I got to see the people getting awards but it wasn't something that was high on my radar and I'm sure that a lot of other people are kind of in the same boat you know we can't just assume that if somebody doesn't show up for an event that they're caught that it's a slight of whatever was going on there are an awful lot of things going on in Rochester at any one time that. It, and I understand that it's just that she was a member for 25 years Mm -hmm. <coughs> an effort to send out an email on that meeting. So let, the thing of it is, this is never going to end until it's addressed. And let me just say this, Father. I really have a problem with you addressing this Clifton as a lady. And then she has her own name. Well, I'm Bessie. sorry. All I, got, I like wrote down here was Betsy because I didn't. Betsy. Bet, Betsy. I, I'm sorry. I don't know the woman. I'm sorry. Well, okay. I didn't say well, her I'm name right. Saying. Just the same as the poor guy not saying Seward right. right. I'm sorry. I. I, I well, this I'll, is I'll, 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 let me let me put it down here uh, on my piece of paper. What -E is her name? D S S I P. Oh, Bessie. Oh, yeah. Last name Clifton. Clifton. Miss Miss Clifton. Yeah, she's eighty-eight Mi years old. Miss Clifton. Yes. How's that? Okay. 
this wasn't supposed to turn into this. It's just that we need to get out there when the neighborhood has good in it and not always the negative. And I was disappointed not to see more support from the neighborhood that I live in. That's all I was saying. Mm -hmm. and we need to try harder. That's all. Okay. Can you do better? Okay. Oh. So there is association. You can envision life is crawl, walk, run. We're leaving crawl, starting to walk. Bylaws are done, starting to work on goals and other issues and starting to get this year planned out. Oh, we don't talk about enough. No, no, we were Sorry. not going to pick you up at that <laughs> level. The Southwest Plymouth <laughs> Business Association is leaving the crawl stage of life and heading into the walk stage and starting um, to get things going, get more people involved. The bylaws are done, the, um, the goals uh, work is starting, and um, we're getting more members in, and it's growing. Go ahead. The end, oh, I'm next then. Yes. Yeah. Very good, okay. Um, well, the main one was that Bessie Clifton uh, was the winner of the first annual Community Champion Award for the Southwest Quadrant. There were four given out. So those other three, the other three quadrants submitted nominations. So we'll do that. Uh, also that uh, Nade Parrish, who is the son of one of the founding members of the Kai Street Black Club, uh, Melissa Parrish, he was um, named the tough word for me to pronounce. Uh, Sal, Salutatorian of his eighth grade graduating class at Rochester Pratt Middle School. And his best friend is the valedictorian. And they're both 14 years old. They're best friends, they're scholars, they're athletes, and they're community lead, uh, youth leaders. And these young men are examples of the best of the Southwest, so I think that's pretty awesome. Blocks and Blooms, um, oh. the initiative is, shall I say, blooming. And I personally love it, obviously, and I hope that um, because they're perennial plants, that they'll be back next year. So that's that's an awesome thing to have that. So kudos to Kathy Lewis. And as you may remember, the Kai Street Block Club has a radio show. Uh, we've been doing this for a year. Uh, we've been taping it for uh, every week for 30 minutes. It's at 106.3 FM, Rochester Free Radio. And this Wednesday, we're going live, so it's pretty exciting for us. Everybody's going live <coughs> now. What time? At, at 4, <coughs> 5, 4 to 5, and uh, on Wednesday at 106.3, awesome. and it's called Street Voices. And what we have done in the past and what we will continue to do is to relay to our listening audience community issues, uh, events that are happening, uh, meetings that the audience perhaps has not been able to attend, so we relay to them what is happening. It has happened in meetings. And we're also going to have guests every week on the show. And our first guest is going to be Bessie Clifton. She was our first guest when we were taking the show, and now we're going to have her back as our first guest. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put up for any block club, any neighborhood association, anybody that wants to come on and tell everybody about their, their block club or their neighborhood association and the good stuff that they're doing. So anybody that's interested in coming on the um, show, let me know or contact Holly Street Voices at gmail.com. And we also are gonna have uh, call-in capabilities. So it's pretty darn exciting. And um, I'm also going to leave everybody with a tease that the Kai Street Block Club is bringing something new to the neighborhood, and it's called Lusar Hood. So I'll, that's right, John, it's a mm -hmm. tease. So next month, I'll tell you more about it. Oh, okay. It. Say it again. Lusar Hood. M-U-S-S-A-R-H-O-O-D. H-H-O-O-D. Lusar Hood. Oh. Hmm. Keep us hanging, are you? Is there a number to call in? Well, when you listen to it, we'll give you the number. Okay. All so right. 106.3 from 4 to 5 every Wednesday live. Yes. <laughs> cool. So, and everything that was relayed here, it's all going out there. Oh, okay. <laughs>
the good and the bad stuff. Hello, my name is Dorian Hall from Press Naval Association. Um, we uh, had a great seminar, I would say, or uh, workshop in the city of Rochester Tuesday um, about uh, open space and parkland, wetlands, and uh, just getting ideas about the open lots that we have in the neighborhood. Um, some suggestions were made. Also, again, we, I just told you guys before, a second ago, we started a new coalition, a new coalition of uh, pretty much all neighborhood associations. We have about maybe 17 right now. And uh, it came about because Emma was having issues with the development. And uh, also the Port of Rochester, they were having issues about um, some development. So we all had a discussion and we just started, I guess it was something called NBN years ago, yep. Neighbors Building Neighbors. So we basically re reiterated that it's gonna be called Many Neighbors Building Neighbors. Uh, so they add the M to it, many neighbors. M many, many neighbors, neighbors building, building neighbors. neighbor. So that's neighborhoods. We, you know, neighborhoods, whatever. Maybe. Yeah, that's what it is. So anyway, so we had about maybe I said 17, 18 neighbor associations. Great. Um, uh, we'll see if it's going to be growing. The whole initiative is is to support each support each other, tell about different things that are happening. So that went well. Uh, the next thing we did, we're doing a healthy kids. Uh, we actually are going to do the uh, Play Rocks Plex. So that's going to be happening on July 16th in our Plex Park. Um, so we're excited for that. And, uh, we're oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. sorry. Um, play, play, play Rocks Plex. So R O C S? S yes. yes. Just play it. Okay, and there are three words Play Rocks and then Plex. Because I guess you're doing like 11, 11 neighborhoods. Am I correct? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm here on. I, I'll get to I'll get okay, to the rest. Okay. Of okay. So we're doing, but, we're doing just give me the date again. It's going to be July sixteenth. Okay. So that's great. It's going to be a free play day, right? right? Yeah. So, so we're we're games and activities. And uh, so that's great. And the kids are there. So we're going to but we're going to try to support it also by trying. To, we're going to work. Still working with Genesee. If maybe we get some horses, you know, some uh, uh, those blow up things for the kids and all. Yeah. So we were all we're going to subsidize some stuff to make it really work. And uh, really get the community and the kids out. So a lot of the kids are excited. We're excited to be working with uh, healthy kids. And uh, other than that, just pushing along our block clubs. We did an initiative with the uh, uh, pole banner wrapping. So now we just got signatures. So in our neighborhood, we have banners. We came up with a design that you actually do a design in between the banner height, which is called a pole wrap. And we did it with the kids last summer with Sean Dunwoody. And uh, so we needed to get signatures from the homeowners and from this property so that we can wrap the pole in front of each individual's houses. So now we're pretty much finishing up that process. And uh, we're going to be doing our next second annual block club uh, yard sale. So last year we did a yard sale. Clement Avenue was pretty busy. Cars come up and down the street. Actually, I think it was John DeMott stopped by and he bought a few things. So because it was so successful with the homeowners, we're doing our second annual uh, yard sale. And a lot of the- uh, On what day? That's gonna be in August. I don't know the day off the hell. I didn't bring the paperwork. I'm just going through the mind. But I can bring that, give that to you. And put it on location 19. And put it on location 19. And that's pretty much it. I have a question. Yeah. When is this coalition meeting so we can attend? I'll get you the information. Well, no, but I mean, you meet monthly? We had our first one, and you're supposed to be having the second one again. Yeah. And I'll make sure. That's why I spoke about it to to put the offer on the table. I'll give the information that you can put it on local 19 for the next week. Okay. Great. Okay. Okay. Uh, David Hawks said that the pole wrapping you had to have the owners, not the tenants. We do have the owners. Okay. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. All right. Owner signatures on the property. Right. Okay. In order to put it in front of the house. Right. I haven't gotten a sheet. Are you an owner of property? Well, Joe hasn't gotten any either. Are you an owner of property? No. Okay. Joe will receive a letter in the mail at his business address, and he'll be able to reply. Okay. Thank you. It's kind of interesting that you have to have a. Uh, we put up a pole. We put them all over the place. And well, the issue was is we did it with the kids, but Mary decided that she didn't want the designs to be on her pole. So the city of Rochester said, in order for us to have designs put on poles, we had to have the owners. Even though that's city property? Even though it was wow. city property. 
Go tell Cornell because you put them up all the time. No, you have banners. Yeah. They yeah. Think they're not placed in canvas. Oh, okay, 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 okay. And okay. Uh, so, okay. you would have community input, right. and there was so, none. So the only there is very much community input. The only the only uh, other neighborhood is uh, the university where they did mosaic yeah. tiles. So we're using the same law group. As long as the homeowner signs off on that design, and we have them all except for the other side of the house, buyers, their developers, or business people. So we even have the U of R, they sign off on it. So we'll see what happens. If they're not the only ones who don't have it, that shows they're not supporting it. But well, anyways, we'll see what happens. It's all good. Thank you. Yes, it's all good. Yes. Hi, I am Patricia Cathy, and basically I am just filling in for Phyllis Jackson. Many of you may know her. Um, so this is my first time attending a meeting and just kind of getting to know people, see what's going on, and get information. Um, Phyllis is the founder of the Interdenominational Health Ministry Coalition, and we had um, a conference last weekend that went very well in which we were talking about health as a spiritual matter, and we're trying to really... Um, promote out in the community that people need to take care of mind, body, and soul. Um, so we're just kind of really trying to push a lot of um, a, a lot of support in getting people to get more serious about their health, um, opening up doors for people to get treatment. Um, we did a lot of the high blood pressure checks, and so she has a lot of programming where they get out there in the community and do high blood pressure checks. Um, we have nine churches right now that we're working with throughout the community and running some health ministries with them um, in terms of just kind of monitoring hypertension and, and, and various sicknesses and um, FLHSA will be collecting some data to kind of make some comparisons and you know see where we could help with some of the health disparities that are in the community. The goal is to continue to expand it, um, to expand this project and really to just kind of um, really work on a lot of the health disparities in the community. Uh, so we have that going. We also have um, high blood pressure checks that will be taking place June 25th um, at a lot of the different barber shops throughout the community. So more information will be coming out about that. And that's where patrons or people in the neighborhoods of these barber shops can come and get free blood pressure checks and things like that. Um, and I think that's just about um, it for some of the, the projects we just you know recently spearheaded and some upcoming things that we have going on. When, some, when you take someone's blood pressure, do you then refer them to someone? Um, or is there a nurse there to like say, you know, you need to do, eat this, 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 and this? Well, and this. Um, one of the things that um, I'm aware of is that they actually have a screening sheet and they complete that with the... Um, with, you know, with, with each and every person that, you know, has the blood pressure checks done and they can have some conversation um, and, and receive some input on some next steps and things like that. The goal is to help people get connected to different services, um, to different programs that are out there in the community that help with a lot of disparities. People aren't aware of a lot of um, free services that are out there to help with a lot of disparities that are in the community. So it's kind of an opportunity to open up some of those doors, some of that communication, network people with the right um, staffing, and uh, just kind of help people get healthy. So they do give a lot of direction. You know, they do answer questions. And um, we have different health providers from all over the place, different nurses and staff and doctors and so forth that volunteer to assist with these different projects. So um, it's pretty informative and helpful. And um, there is a screening that is completed, so. If, um, if you can send me the dates and what the barber shops that they'll be at, okay. I'll put a mass email out. Okay. That'll be awesome. Okay. So you need So I'll make sure I'll take your I'll take I'll take down your contact right. information at the end. You're always welcome. I put pressure seven okay. ten points to send. <laughs> <laughs> Oh wow! All right. Um, so I, once again, I'm here to communicate stuff for Jen. It's not because she doesn't like to attend. She's uh, she's really busy. She's actually, in addition to doing all the play rock stuff, she's moving. Uh, so not not from Rochester by any means. So she's very busy. Um, and I was coming here for the traffic. 
So uh, that's how we do it for <laughs> F-L-A-S-A. Um, so I, I will convey this information. If anyone has very detailed questions, I might not be able to answer them, uh, but I can get you answers. And Jen is always open to answering questions. Um, she's been working really hard to organize uh, Play Rocks, which is gonna be July 16th. It's uh, an organized day of play taking place at locations all throughout the city. Um, there are, I think, 11 plus maybe at this point, um, play days. So what they are, there are gonna be a few hours of um, organized and free play, just creating a safe space for kids to come and parents to bring their kids to have some fun, uh, burn some calories, run around, make some friends and make some connections within the neighborhood. Um, in the Southwest, there's going to be four. Um, you have Plex, of course. Um, James Dobson Tower is going to have a play day from uh, 12 to 4. And there will be one here at Phyllis Wheatley from 11 to 3. Um, New Era Rochester and Signature <coughs> Styles are, have put in, I think, for permits and will be shutting down Hobart Street, a block of Hobart Street, and they'll have a big event there. Um, so uh, that'll be 12 to 4. 12 yeah. And when is the Plex? The Plex is 12 to 4, right? Yeah, it's 12 to 4. Yeah. So, so any... Yeah. any yeah, you go back. Go ahead. There'll, be, there'll be plenty of options. Uh, there'll be, you know, free family fun, snacks, giveaways. Uh, the city's Wreck on the Move team is going to be making the rounds all around. They're going to try to get to every spot. Um, and they do really great things. They just bring, you know, jump ropes, hula hoops, and really engage with the kids. Um, there's gonna be the 5210 street team, which uh, educates kids about healthy eating. Um, and they'll also be making the rounds to all the different Play Rocks events. And there will be more. Um, Jen is working on fan finalizing the flyers and she'll get them to Eleanor, uh, hopefully in the next week or so. Um, and we're also working on a toolkit. I almost had it ready to bring you your toolkit, but uh, there's still ironing out some uh, last minute details on that. Well, I'm hoping that next year we can really have you at the festival because we have the whole entire, uh, you know, soccer field there. We have a band in there and a lot of things. We try to do this whole end down here for kids. We have a changing table and, and lots of stuff for kids, bouncy things and stuff like that. But there's a piece of the field near the ball diamond near, I mean, there's a lot of field over there that could easily just have one of your programs over there. Sure, and and just for future reference, we have um, on hand, we keep it in a handy storage container, lots of uh, materials that can be used for pop-up playgrounds, things like painted tires that can be used for like jumping through and different games um, and equipment for that sort of stuff. So um, I went to the y, or went to the library last year, you had the yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I, I don't know if I met you at the last meeting. I'm no. still pretty fresh no. over at the Healthy Kids team. No, so I will, I, I, I will get in touch with you for next year. Absolutely, really absolutely. Thing. And if you'd like, uh, I'll give you my business card on the way out, and you can send me an email. I'll see if there's yeah. anything that we can do. I know that they are pretty overwhelmed <laughs> right now. Not overwhelmed, but, you know. Well, not really. for this year, but for next year. So okay, I absolutely. Think be a yeah. very good, healthy thing for us to do. I think that's great. So yes? I have two questions for you. One, do you need tires? We have hundreds. <laughs> I don't know. I will, uh, I will ask out. Jen. They'll deliver them. <laughs> I, yeah. I still have one question. Great. What day do you guys have a big association? Because I want to attend one of the For not to answer that question. I mean, I'm in business, so, so, I, yeah, so I've, I've started there's some, a... Uh, there's some underlying issues that are growing that you're aware of. For, for the business association? No, no for you. you no, no, I'm asking, like trying to start anything. I own a business uh, mm -hmm. development company. Me and a minority started a minority development company. We purchased a few properties on Plymouth Avenue. The whole idea is to um, involve the community with needs the community wants. Minority brothers came together. We purchased some properties, and we buy actually going to buy a few more things. So we've been working with the state and a few other people who, you know, giving us some, and they love the whole idea. So for this year's Plymouth Avenue Business Association, me being owner of the Plymouth Business in the Plymouth Association, I would like to attend those meetings if it's open to the public. If it's not, if you have issues, then 
I don't know, but, but I don't do this. Okay, so, okay. Just like so that. I just want to make sure in front of these people, I ask a question about no attending the association. Be yeah. very aware of what the situation is. You had another question? Yes. How do you handle insurance? Like you're going to do... That's a site-by-site -site issue. So who, each... Who, get, who purchases that? It, well, it depends upon the uh, size of the event, but it's a site. It's not a healthy kids team, so it it's you know uh, on each site to make sure that they're. You know, we've provided assistance with the permitting and and helping you know sort of make sure we know uh, what's required of all of them, uh, and uh, and then it's up to each site. We're not you know. I guess I was looking for a name because it's hard to get insurance. Oh, you want an insurance company? Yes. I don't know. No. Okay. Mm. Or actually, the process to go through as far as um, there's different people that are interested in providing that kind of insurance and many that are not interested in providing those insurances. And when we've had some cool things we had to go through, um, I remember the company. We were hoping that basically the city, because this event was on city power, we the city would like mm -hmm. under, underwrite it like that. I think it depends upon the size of the event, what, you know, where it becomes, you know, more than just, you know, people playing in a park. So uh, it's, you know, I think it's dependent upon upon that. Um, okay. But I, I I am just speaking from the hip here. I am not. What's that? Jen would probably have a better idea. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you. Is that it? Okay, I'm on. Um, Prosper Rochester. Um, on Saturday here, um, from 10 to 2, we're going to have a pre-Rock Soup. Rock Soup is the uh, micro-funding program that helps people, grassroots folks who want to start their own business. We started last time with a project. That project's on West Main Street, and if you look at the boxes, there's organic uh, soil in there and plants, uh, vegetables growing out and flowers. Um, so I'm with kids. He's a teacher at East uh, Arondacoit. So, um, and we're working together and he helps uh, me also with rock soup. Um, and so now what we've decided is we're going to meet at the 1872 Cafe, which I think builds up a little visibility for the cafe. Our volunteers meet there. We have like some they have lunch, I have some coffee, and then we go water the plants and do whatever it is we were going to do that day. Um, for Oasis, and I think uh, your group, Phyllis Jackson, met with uh, our Oasis CNA program. People should be very concerned that the city school district is eliminating Oasis or eliminating the Oasis CNA program. They're taking some of the programs that have the highest job placement rates and eliminating them, and the reason is because of the deficit that they're in. Um, but the fact is, out of the money that we get from the district, it is only four children, and it was 1.2 million, and they wiped that out, but they came back and gave us, I think, 250,000 to run a program for 17 to 21 year olds who have uh, who are out of school but need to be in school and um, we that all together all the agencies only serve seven percent of the population that needs to be served and we serve I think close to five um, eliminating us you, you know, they're saying our REOC can pick up the slack, but REOC, you have to have a high school equivalency before you can start their programs. So it's not, and, and our CNA program graduates 80 to 100 people a year. EOC can't pick that up. And so um, we have students who aspire to go to EO, EOC. We are not in competition with EOC. We are serving students they do not serve. And, you know, a lot of these adults that we serve are people who, 1,000 of them have kids in the Rochester City School District. That's, those kids are going home and seeing mom or dad in school, are seeing a value for education in 
in school and I'm really surprised at how it's like just sliding it's sliding right through and uh, the programs that they're taking away will ensure that Oasis will not meet its targets for the grants that it does have the 90 some percent that it does get by themselves and they have to be attached to a public school which is the reason they're attached to the city school district and um, so I'm looking for alternatives I'm we're trying to figure out well what else can we do because it the other program that I don't want to see go which will be eliminated is the building maintenance that's the property management pro one and that to me that hooks up to code violations you know like if we had students or our, our neighbors knowing young people knowing how to to address code violations for homes knew how to fix up the vacant houses work with neighbor works try to get them into those houses it just seems like it's a really um, it's it's not uh, a wise long in the short term it may help them but in the long term I think it's going to do a lot of damage and it's going to stop people who really need it from being able to get into school and start to change their life around our training programs let you work on your high school equivalency including CNA while you're training so that it's not this long you know the students that we're serving are ones that have you know been dropped by the city school district so they're going to be dropped twice so that's all <laughs> so what can we do so one of the things is there's a, a meeting tomorrow actually I'm afraid to say that because this guy's taping um, and I don't want the district to come in and what they've done is they've put together a very powerful um, what I call a propaganda piece which will get me in a lot of trouble tonight I'm here as Prosper Rochester um, but it has in it very misleading facts like when they list all the agencies that can pick up the slack when Oasis leaves, REOC is one of them, and there's many reasons they can't. Urban League serves no adults um, for technical training. Ibero serves no adults for technical training. Uh, Rochester Works has no technical training. They provide funding for technical training. So the the ones that they put in there aren't le legit. They aren't so. If you're reading it, you go, oh yeah, we've got REOC, we've got Urban League. You, if you aren't aware of the intricacies, you don't know. You don't realize that, whoa, this isn't going to work. When they say they're closing three programs, that's eight teachers. You know, uh, it, to, to close the CNA program when the community is screaming for health professionals is ludicrous, is crazy. What percent of the students are going to be gone? See, that's the part I'm not good at. Okay. I don't know. I, I know that we typically, I think I was hearing him say we serve 400 to 600 youth. That would be 400 to 600 youth that are not going to be served. Okay. Now, because of that, hearing that, they've put in like $250,000. But I'm talking the youth that are on the street. I, yeah, I think that the biggest point here is the fact that this is where all those people, uh, our graduation rate is pretty low. So we have all of these kids who start, start school, but they don't finish. <coughs> and, and because they don't have a high school thing. Now, I have now been to every library in the city up several times, and I'm seeing three, four, two people in their classes for, to be prepared to take the, the equivalency test. The whole high school equivalency program is no longer. You have to pretty much, it's a do-it-yourself thing that you kind of prepare for it and then you go take the test. This particular program allows you to come in and learn a trade. At the same time, you spend a little extra time and you cram for your high school. So at the end of it, you get two certificates. You get a, a high school certificate and you get a certificate of some merit that you, some trade that you've learned. And there isn't any other program that does this. There's no question about that. So for all of those kids that were not educated 
for years and who did who dropped out. I mean, I don't know what the rate is at this point. You probably know. I know it used to 50. be like 10,000 kids start and, and 200 finish or something. I mean, it's like, you know, I mean, when you can put all of the black scholars on two pages of the newspaper, that's, <laughs> there's not too many that are, that are graduating. And this is really an inner city and a poor, poor, poor situation. It very definitely is. So this, and the, and the training program is really outstanding. It's yeah. got, I mean, there isn't anybody who has gotten a student from there or who has had a student go through there who will, would not write, write a, you know, a rape report. But I think the city school district just needs money shuffled uh, to other places, and so they have to take it from someplace. And once again, they're going to be taking it from the people who, somewhere along the line, missed out. And, and I, just the statistics for the CNA program, and this may not be for all of them, but I'm giving you the CNA because to eliminate that program is egregious. That, that is, it's just egregious. 93% of the students who start that program complete that program. 98 to 99% get a job. Like when they're taking the test and they come out, the employers are there grabbing. You know, they actually have choices of where they want to go. So what about going to the employers that are grabbing these kids? We have had employers <coughs> talk to the district. I don't know what it would take. I, I really don't know what it would take and why there is such um, a block to this. Um, what I, time I, is your meeting and do you need people to show up? I think we've got some key players at a meeting I'm not going to say when. Um, <laughs> and I've been asked, because I've been advocating for Oasis, and, and I'm also, until next Wednesday, an employee there. Um, you know, I've been asked to meet with Adele um, next week. So she's the assistant superintendent who just yeah. resigned. <laughs> so I don't know what that's going to be about, but, um, <laughs> but I, it just doesn't seem clean or it just doesn't seem well thought out. It's like a cabinet has come up with um, some decisions. I know that a lot of money is being thrown into Edison Tech for the technical programming, but that doesn't serve the people we serve. Unfortunately, they're just throwaway people. Yeah, and you know, I, I work at 540 West Main, and uh, I see those people. So, John, I apologize. Thank you. I have to go to a wake. So. Oh, okay. Well, sorry, you can't you make much. it. Stay, stay longer. Okay. Anything well, else? Do you need yeah. Yeah. Let us know. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. This is a good example of something that's very complicated that um, I, I met with uh, Mary Adams a little earlier this week and um, we were going over a lot of things relative to the schools and Mary Adams is one of those uh, school board members and she is just great I mean she's she's been more involved with the schools in the 19th Ward even though they aren't the ones that she has under her uh, responsibility. She lives in the ward and her kids go to the schools. But I, you know, I look at some of these people uh, who, board members who spend a tremendous amount of time worrying about what's going on in the schools and being really sincere at trying to put time in. I mean, I'm retired and I spend most of my time you know, screwing around with things like this, but my income is kind of guaranteed, doesn't knock on wood and all that. But uh, these people, they've got a full-time job and then they're putting in hours that match mine and then some doing all these things. So they're not doing this because they get up in the morning and they want to screw something up for the, for the city and for the kids, you know, they're really... Um, well, this is something that very likely the the administration looks at how they're going to handle their budget, and of course you have to remember that 
when it when you're the one who has to make decisions on to where do I take money from to cover this hole in the budget, you have a different uh, perspective a little bit than the person who's over in Oasis. But still, um, you know the the rationale that they offered certainly seemed uh, questionable from from my perspective. But we need to. When I talked with Mary, I said, you know, I, I was looking, I was at a meeting with Eleanor the other day and Ralph Spezio was there with me and we were discussing some of the problems with shutting down some of this Oasis stuff. And she had apparently done some checking of facts that the district had offered her and she kind of agreed with what they had come up with. I don't know enough about all these agencies to say for sure that yeah this one won't cover this or that but you know the arguments I heard from about Oasis over the, the past few years that Eleanor has been there and I've gone and visited there a few times and have you know a pretty good impression of what function Oasis has in the community and a lot of the things that we've been involved with with uh, uh, the school task force that I'm on right now for looking at choice policy. A lot of the times we say, well, this is kind of the sort of job you'd like to get something like Oasis in to do continuing education so that parents of students in that school have some means of, you know, getting some extra skill so they can get a job because a lot of the kids, you know, have parents who are unemployed or, or take have two or three jobs trying to make ends meet and there are jobs that you know they need something better um, so I you know we need to make sure that we we try to talk with everybody and uh, you know we need to you know, we need to get together with Mary and see where did she get her corroboration for the you know to come up with her her sense that maybe the, what this the district proposed was right Everybody gets up in the morning and goes to work hoping to do the right thing. And if they're doing the wrong thing, then we need to be talking and not assuming that they're trying to screw things up because you know they're, they're trying to balance a budget or there may be some program that they have a particular interest in because it's their baby or something and maybe they have you know some favoritism on that without even realizing it. Uh, and the same thing goes for for this group as we look at the various factions here. We really need to be talking with one another and uh, making sure that we're not assuming the worst when sometimes it's just a lack of communication. Is there any possibility to have those agencies speak at, to the school board to say, we don't serve we can't serve that age of person. I don't know. Yeah, have you have you talked to any of them? Uh, of the agencies? Yeah. No. I, it's not really my role. I think my role is I'm with Prosper Rochester and I'm working with, you know, people from halfway houses. I'm working with, you know, people that are hanging on the street and I know that when I'm with the folks that I hang with that if I see a behavior that's not good I can say you shouldn't be doing that and there is an alternative there is something it's something clear I can say that you can do don't do this but you could do that you know you can't just say don't do this um, and Oasis has always had teachers who like um, kind of hang hang with you like that uh, for a lot of schools you're not going to have them calling home to find out where are you you know and some of these students there's like we have a person on staff who does nothing but deal with DHS issues because so many of the students get into school they have childcare issues 
you know, something goes wrong. The person we have has like 33 years experience with the Department of Human Services and walks through that with them, you know, makes a referral for because they don't have clothes to go on an interview, makes a referral so that they can go to an agency that gives out several outfits for interviews. You know, there's a lot more to what it is that we do in building relationships with the students. You know, that, that um, I don't think people are probably aware of, you know. I, yeah, is there, is there, that was kind of an interesting question. Can you call up some of these agencies that they're suggesting See, the Eleanor place? Coleman, well, of course, as an executive director of Prosper Rochester, I probably could, but yeah. as Oasis, mm -hmm. that's really the executive director, like that's, and, and really, even he, treads a fine line when he does it, I'm guessing, because he's a district employee and he has to do what the district tells him to do. Mm -hmm. So it's really <clears throat> odd, a very odd place. And, you know, like I said, it's very odd to be called into Adele's office to talk about Oasis without, you know, I mean, why? <laughs> uh, so it'll be interesting to see uh, why. Yeah. But be, um, who knows? It may be a good wine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah okay. Yeah, I just say something before we run out of time. I, I do, and I, this is fine. I want to make two clarifications about what Gloria said about the South Plymouth Avenue Business Association meeting. I was there at the first one. Dorian came to the door. I didn't come to the door. I mean, I didn't. But he was told, but I was there. And, and Dorian, it was suggested to him, or told that he could absolutely participate in the business meetings if, if he participated in mediation. So let's be very clear that it's not like he was like turned away and he could never come. The second thing is, the second thing is, is that this business with Plax and, and Bessie Clifton, I just want everybody to know that Dorothy Hall, Gloria Edmonds, Nola Brown, or Nola Brooks, and someone else, they're all invited to Bessie's celebratory party so that's going to be at Mary's house. So whatever conflict there is, you know, sometimes it's because people think that there's a conflict. Because there's not one here as far as Bessie Clifton. She's giving the party. Bessie's being the honoree and Dorothy and Gloria and all of them are invited to the party. Great. So that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. And as far as Dorian, absolutely. I know for a fact that he would be welcome, but he needs, like everybody else, to go to mediation first. I'll just respond. Sure. Flex has, an attorney. Flex has an attorney and advise us not to, first of all, um, visit anything. If we have a professional organization, we have um, Carson Commons, we have our meetings, and we have our neighbor meetings at Carson Commons. He advised us not to partake or participate in anything that Mrs. De Alessandro has going on at her house. Um, secondly, uh, as Plex, we are in the neighborhood. We are homeowners. Um, I actually am a homeowner. I pay taxes as well. Um, we're not investors. We're not people coming in to purchase property. We're not, uh, I guess, confrontational. Our goal is to evolve the community together. We know that there's change happening in the place. We all want to come up together. As positive things happen, we want to make sure those happen for the community also. So as far as attending that meeting, the reason why I won't attend that meeting, or we can't, if I was tall, or drift tall, or people, because our attorney advised us not to visit your particular then why business. did you ask to come? Because the business association is supposed to be public, right? So it's supposed to be an open public situation, and I own a business, I should be able to attend. So if you have the meetings, I would love to attend. And as far as, as far as to be public also. Wait, wait, and as far as mediation goes, our attorney said, and I'll put this on the record, um, you have no standing in Plex. Plex, the neighbor association, is ran by homeowners, people who own property, and renters who happen to live there for eight years or more, they are vested. It's not ran by investors who spend $2 million to purchase properties 
um, and could be gone today, tomorrow. So anyway, that's why we wanted to know these. But your mother said that she couldn't come because your brother was coming. That's so true. your mother said she was coming, so I guess she wasn't paying attention to what the attorney said then. Do you have anyone attending? Excuse me? Do you have anyone attending from class? Well, I don't know. You just said, do you have anyone attending? What I'm saying is that, that I was there when Dorothy was asked, and your mother said that she would come, but she couldn't. She gave you, she gave you that, that yeah, term. And she, she, said, she said she wouldn't come. She, 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 she was being nice. That's the best thing I can tell you. She's being nice. Oh, she's being nice. All right. 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 Okay. Dorian, yeah. Flex Neighborhood Association is also a public meeting, and you threw Greg and I out. Why you threw me out? I know. Why so, you threw Greg out, I don't know, so all right? Out. But City Council, Southwest Common Council, and the Neighborhood Service Center have asked you to go to mediation. And I am not going to have a negative force in my house. Okay. We're done. When you own property in place? We're done. And you purchase the property you live in, when you invest in place? Doesn't it own definitely Your mother doesn't place. own her house? Yes, she does. No, it, no she doesn't. It's really, in, really it is in an irrevocable trust. That is a legal entity. Called what? The Thomas and Dorothy Hall. Irrevocable it doesn't trust. matter. It is a Okay, this is trust. one of those times when it's yeah, unfortunate the net isn't here. And it's 7 30. And it's 7 30. Okay, would you guys please try to get together and you know any 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 time that you start saying my attorney doesn't want me to talk to you, that's a pretty bad situation. When you have documentation when someone goes down to City Hall. This is recorded mm -hmm. on a document, and we have this. And she says, Mary D'Alessandro, just on the record, that she believed my mother, Dorothy Hall, the executive director of Plex, had something to do with a fire, right? Yes, Defamation of character, right? That's what they call it. Defamation That's of character. Right? She has so, every right so wait a minute, to say wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. We're done. That tells you, from an attorney perspective, she cannot be trusted. Do not involve yourself with this woman. Stay away. Ah, it looks like it's We're gonna done. go on for a while yet. Yeah.